The great thing about options trading is that there are solid strategies for making money when the market is not moving, which is when most day traders struggle. But there are also powerful ways to make money when the market is moving as well. I'm Seth Freudberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan. And the traders on our options desk are professionals who know how to take strategies designed for slow moving markets and adapt them powerfully when the market starts moving. So if you're interested in learning how options traders adapt their strategies to respond to large moves in the market, then stick around because I think you're going to find this interesting. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so Tech stocks have been on an amazing tear over the last few years, as most of you know, and options traders like to trade tech stocks through using NDX index options, the NASDAQ 100 index, which comprises most of the top publicly traded tech stocks. Now, in today's video, we're going to be teaching you a technique for trading an option strategy known as the calendar spread, which is a powerful way to make excellent returns in a slow channeling market, but can be adapted powerfully to markets making big moves as well. Now, I want to very quickly review how index options work so you can learn this strategy easily. For those of you who have a handle on index options, just hang in there for a minute and we'll jump back into how this strategy works. Okay, so now almost all of you are probably familiar with equity options where a call buys you the right to buy 100 shares of a stock at the strike price of that option anytime before the option expires and a put option entitles you to sell 100 shares at the strike price of the put before that option expires. But there are also index options which work similarly to equity options except there's no such thing as 100 shares of an index like the S&P 500. You can't really buy or sell 100 shares of an index, but what you can do is get paid in cash $100 per point if the index expires above the strike price of an index call that you buy, or alternatively, you'd be paid $100 per point for each point the index drops below the strike price of your index put. So for example, if the NDX index is trading at 91.50 and you buy the 91.60 call, if the index closes at 91.65, you'd receive $500 in cash in your account. If the index closes at 96.10 or lower, on the other hand, your call expires worthless. On the other side of the market, if you buy a 91.35 put and the market sells off to 91.25, you'd make $1,000. But if the market just sold off to 91.35 or higher, the put would expire worthless. So those are the basics of index options. And remember, you can buy options, but your broker will allow you to sell options as well and your broker will also allow you to put together combinations of options. In other words, option strategies that involve both short and long options purchased in a way that is advantageous to you as a trader. So let's get back to October of last year. And as you can see, the index was in the middle of this sustained rally. And at that point, it had started to channel in the 7,600 to 7,800 7, area. And so a strategy that an options income trader might apply to a market like this would be what is known as the calendar spread, which is something we covered in last week's video. So for instance, let's say that we decided to enter into a calendar spread in which we sell the November 7750 put and head over to the December options chain and buy the December 7750 put. In other words, the same strike in a different month. This formation, which we also discussed in last week's video, is what is known as a calendar spread when you're short a front month option and long a back month option. And you'll typically enter into this trade if you're in a channeling market, hoping that the market will stay in a small range around the price of your options. As mentioned in the last videos, that can result in a very large return on capital. But if the market takes off hard in one direction or another, you'll need an approach to handling that and that's what we'll be teaching you in this video. Now, before we get into how you trade calendar spreads when the market starts to move 
strongly in one direction or another, I wanted to let you know that there are lots of sound, viable long-term techniques for trading options for income. And in fact, we're currently running a two-hour free intensive workshop at the moment where we'll be teaching you three of those strategies that real professional options traders use, including a really simple but incredibly effective strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world, like Warren Buffett, use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage. So if those strategies would be of interest to you, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the, up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It, it's a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Back to our calendar spread. Let's first take a look at what has happened as we entered this trade from a cash flow standpoint. And as you can see, we sold that 77.50 November put for 221.80, but remember that pays off $100 per point below 77.50. So that is multiplied by 100 to arrive at your total cash flow from selling that option, which comes to 22.180. Now to buy that 77.50 put in December, that has a cost of 292.85 because there's more risk that the option will pay off if the index heads down, given that it has an extra month time-wise to do that. And so as you can see from the calculation, the cost is 29.285. And so the net cost to us is the net of those two, which brings us to a debit of 71.50 for entering into this trade, which is also the maximum risk of the trade. So that is how the calendar spread trade begins. Now let's move forward to October 25th. And as we can see, the index has moved up about 250 points from the entry day on the trade. So at this stage, in a case where the index they're trading has made a large move, most options income traders would essentially relocate the position to, the, to where the market has moved, which in this case is about 8,000, 250 points above the 7750 level. The thinking behind this is that if the market now begins to channel after making its move, then the calendar spread, which works best when the index is challenging, can thrive under those conditions. So in that case, the trader would roll the position up, as you can see. And we do that by closing out the original 7750 position and simultaneously opening up a new calendar spread at 8,000 in the same months, as you can see. Now, let's take a look at what's happened so far from a profit and cash flow standpoint to understand the implications of this move. So as far as the original calendar is concerned, it only cost us 36.82 to buy back that short November put because the index has moved up so much and that short put has lost a lot of its value. And remember, we sold it for over 220 originally, so we made a nice profit on that one. At the same time, the long put in December at the 77.50 strike also lost a lot of value because of that same move up. However, that option has a longer life than the November option, so it has retained more of its value than the short put did which is, is expiring soon. So even though it has also lost a lot of value, it's still worth over $100. And thus, as you can see from the calculations, we made a small profit on the closing of the original calendar spread. And as you can see from the new calculation, the new calendar spread cost is arrived at again by netting out the cash flow we received from selling that 8,000 put in November from the cost of the 8,000 put in December. And so as you can see now, we have a slightly more expensive new calendar that we've entered into 24 days later, having made a small profit on the first one. So essentially, we have a new trade. Now let's move forward to 10 days later on November 4th. And as you can see, the market has moved up yet another 200 points. And so at this point, the prudent thing to do is to roll your calendar spread up again, right to the new NDX market price of 8,200 just like we did last time. So again, we need to look at the effect of this second roll. And so as you can see from the calculations, that short put again lost a lot of value, as did the long put. But again, there was a slight difference in how much value each lost because the farther out put in December, 
still has to retain a lot more value as it is exposed to market moves for a lot longer. So when you crunch the numbers, you see we made another very small profit on that second calendar. And now focusing on the new calendar, you can see that this one is again slightly more expensive, which tends to happen as you buy calendar spreads closer to the expiration of the short strike of the calendar spread, which is always in the month that's going to expire earlier. And so now at this point, we've made a profit on the first two calendars, and now we're entering our third calendar spread, 450 points above the original one, and we're hoping at this point, as you'll understand in a minute, that the NDX will finally take a breather and allow more profit to flow into our newest calendar up at 8200. So we'll now move to the final day of trading of the short put. And as you can see, the NDX has only moved up 50 points, only up to 8250 above the new location of the calendar spread, which is a minor move compared to the first two rallies that forces the roller calendar up twice. Now that is extremely significant because with less than a day left, the short put down at 8,000 is almost certain to have no value as it expires because the market has almost no time to sell off strongly and give it any value at all. Whereas the long strike, the December 8,200 put, still has most of it, the value it had the day we bought it as part of the new 8,200 calendar because the market hasn't moved much and it still has 36 days to go before it expires and so there's plenty of time for the market to head back down and add value to that put. So now let's take a look at the profit picture on that calendar, which we would now close. So as you can see, we received back 12920 from selling that 8200 December put, which had held most of its value, but it's, it cost us almost nothing, $410, to buy back the short put that we sold 10 days earlier for over $7,500. And so we made a tremendous profit on the short put, while we didn't lose that much on the long December put as it happened in the previous cases. So as you can see from the calculation, uh, we made over $2,800 on that final calendar. And when you add that to the small profits on the other two calendars that we closed earlier in the trade, the entire campaign made us over $3,000, which is in excess of a 30% return on the largest calendar that we bought in the trade, that final calendar at 8,200. And so the important takeaway from this video is that options income traders don't just give up if the market fails to channel and provide a profit on their trades as they had originally hoped for. Instead, they're flexible and they move their positions around as many times as they need to until the markets finally take a breather as the NDX did in the final 10 days of this trade, which is when almost all of the profit flowed into the trade. That's because we were patient and persistent, trusting that at one point, the market would settle as we wrap up the trade and watch the value of the short put deteriorate to almost nothing while because the market hadn't moved much that long put retained much of its value options income traders like the guys on our desk here at smb understand these principles and learn to modify their positions to ultimately profit from a campaign of calendar spreads like we demonstrated today now just to remind you as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video and learned something valuable from it, and you'd like to learn the details of three real-world option strategies that professional options traders use all the time, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in the new window so you won't lose this video, don't worry. Or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now so you won't miss all the free trading videos that we're posting constantly on our channel to help you improve your game as an options trader.